Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, I'm out here uh, in the woods, as it were. Um, only, maybe not quite as much as it might appear. In fact, if you look that way, if I look that way, I'll see, I see a road, a driveway. Right here is a typical American house, just behind the camera. Um, but I am um, right on the edge of my property over there is the woodland workshop that I've been working on this uh, behind me here is actually going to be the uh, uh, the knife shop that I'm working on building uh, I apologies for not posting more I've been in the middle of moving um, not far but still moving uh, the the house I mentioned we're we're actually renting from uh, some family who are overseas right now um, long story won't get into it now um, I actually wanted to talk about being out here in the woods because there's a couple of things that came up. Um, one of these was a guy posted on, I had a, a video about, hey, remember to take care of each other. Y'all take care of each other. That's my, kind of my tagline, my, my big thing. The, the thing that I want people to get from these videos more than anything else is y'all take care of each other. And, uh, I was talking in that video about building a network of good people, uh, building uh, a network of, you know, building up your, your social network, your in real life social network, not your online. Online is, is important, it's a, another aspect, but it's not as important as here now, the people you know and can like look over and, and say hi to. Um, one of the, the comments said, hey, you know, this is, this is cool. Even out in the woods, building your your network is important and and i thought that was interesting um the other thing was uh a discussion that's been kind of going on over the the course of several weeks at uh the church i go to uh w one of the guys there challenged everybody so you know i want you to think about this is is it the case that the, the modern American Christianity has become um, of the world, but not in it. Now, if you didn't grow up in Sunday school, you might not know what that's referencing. There's, a, there's this biblical idea, this, this passage that talks about being in the world, but not of it. That is, not thinking like the world, not, not thinking in, um, not, not valuing possessions over people for example um to to have an eternal perspective to um and, and what this was was saying is that hey people have got that backwards we've as uh as a group christianity has isolated itself so taking themselves out of the world but at the same time adopted the mindset of the world and i think there is there's a point there all right I'm gonna give him that. There is, there is a, there's a point at which, yeah, he's, he's, there's something that going on. Um, and one of these times we were discussing this, it came up. Uh, one of the other gentlemen there asked, uh, you know, when I talk about things like, I, I honestly think we're going to need to develop thousands upon thousands of little microsystems to take care of ourselves. And the people around us, not so much because I see a, a collapse of the big system, although there's issues there, all right? There's issues. Um, but more because I see the systems now are engineered not to benefit the people down here that are actually working to make these systems work. Uh, they're, they're engineered to benefit people higher up, and they, it's not that they want to hurt everybody else. It's that they don't care if they do, and that's led to a lot of things where uh, the people that supposedly these systems are going to take care of, uh, they're not. In fact, quite the opposite. Um, so as, as a response to that, because I, I said I think we need to, we're going to be in a place where we need to invest in our own systems for the things that feed and fuel our daily lives. Um, <clears throat> he, he brought that up and said, you know, 
um, basically what good are we to the people around us if we've isolated ourselves? And again, I, I understand that there's a, a point to be made there, but I don't think I don't think it is what people think it is. <clears throat> so yeah, can you go off and, and isolate yourself and just just you know um, disappear off the face of the earth? I suppose um, it's not really a life that I want. Um, but when I come out here in the woods and I, I say I want to live in the woods, um, what's up with that? What what do I mean? there why why do that and why would someone who wants to take care of people around him come out to the woods where there's i mean there's nobody here i'm 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 it i'm the only person here right now um what's up with that and how does how does that that fit together there and so there's a couple of things a couple of things i want to talk about number one is is quality so backstory myself uh, rewind circa early 2000s, I was just out of high school and attending Moody Bible Institute. It's, uh, it's in Chicago, Illinois. Well, I was in the aviation program. And now if you're in the aviation program, I, I think you just go to Washington State. At the time, you would go to two years of general college and all the Bible stuff up at Chicago, Illinois. And then you go down south to Elizabethton, Tennessee, and they had a facility down there. I got to tour of that. Um... Never ended up going there. Um, dropped out, joined the Marine Corps after 9-11. Uh, the, the rest is not relevant. My point is, I was in Chicago. I was in not like the outskirts of Chicago, but like right down. Like Google the school. Look, look it up. It's, uh, it's right downtown. You walk that way. You are on the, what do they call it, Magnificent Mile. You walk the other way. You just don't look at people and you get out of there as fast as you can. It's that kind of place. Um, and honestly, I was miserable. My quality of life was like just tanking and went down to zero. I hated it there. It was, it was so, to me anyway, it was so dehumanizing. This is the whole environment, the, that, that concrete jungle. And that extended to the relationships that I had with people. I had, I was like flooded, overwhelmed with human contact. And none of it meaningful, right? I could, I maybe have a, a discussion with people here and there, but it was, it was always, um, there, there was no lasting relationship there. Some of that, I admit, was the fact that I was at a, a school where you go for a few years and then you go away. Um, yes, that's part of it. But it struck me that even the people around, like the, the city itself, so many people were from away. And it had been there for a few years, and we're going off somewhere else. It almost felt like the military all over again. I was a military brat growing up, so every two to three years we'd pick up and move. I had better relationships, more lasting relationships that came out of that than I had the couple of years I was in Chicago. And it was, it was very easy for me to see how the city had, and all the things that go along with the city, had really destroyed what should have been some great relationships between people um, and, and culture groups. And how coming from uh, a few years before this, my dad had retired and we moved to a, uh, at the time it was a fairly rural place in Alabama. And you could, you could really see how people had meaningful, long-lasting relationships. There, was, there were cultural boundaries but they, believe it or not, were not as rigid as the cultural boundaries I saw in the inner city. Um, it, was, it was something. It was, it was quite the experience. And uh, I was miserable there. My, my quality of life, my quality of relationships, all, everything that I valued as far as quality for me um, was non-existent there. Now, I say this with the understanding that there are people out there for, this, for whom this is not true at all. They love the city. I'm glad you have it. I just don't want it. It was not good for me. So my other point... Um, uh, 
my other point is capability. Um, might also phrase it control, if you like. And that was that my capability to provide for myself and to provide for those around me was far more limited there in the city. There was very little that I could do about anything. There was very little um, that I could tap into as far as resources. Yes, there were there was some, but not um, not the kind I was I was needing and looking for. Um, also, when you looked around, the needs were just overwhelming. The the especially if you you look past the the bright lights and the sort of glamorous facade, the need, the despair inherent in these cities, and I've seen it, I've seen it in most urban centers that I've I've gone to. Um, not just here, you'll see it abroad more. Some some countries a little less. Some I would argue do a better job of just cleaning it up. Some actually do a better job of of uh, not creating it in the first place. But in general, you, you have in a city a concentration of need and a limited ability to go address that need. Whereas I feel like out here, my ability to address the needs around me are is, is far and away greater. Um, <clears throat> of course, I, I've had it rolling around in my head uh, ever since I thought of titling this video in a woods uh, there's a line I'm sure all my uh, my Firefly fans out there are thinking of it where a character in there uh, Captain Reynolds says um, I like the woods because that's the only place I can see a clear path and I think that in in a lot of ways really speaks to what I mean when I say capability if I want to go do something in a city um Good luck. Something, something meaningful, something lasting. Let's say I just want to build something on my own property. First off, getting property in a city is, uh, well, it's not impossible, but good luck. Especially when you're looking at um, that school, uh, Moody Bible Institute, is there because they bought way, 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 way back. Um, there's no way they could afford to put it there now. Um, I know there's always talk of, um, every now and again talk comes around of, of selling that property and moving further out, um, because it would it would sell for some unreal amount of money, and you could build a really really large school uh, further out. Um, so just the fact that you're trying to get property, trying to get property here is hard and has gotten harder as time has gone on. Um, and we could get into that some other time if you want. Um, and there may come a time where I need where I look around and say I need to sell this property. And it's going to be to my benefit to sell here and move further out yet still. Um, hopefully it'll be a couple generations down the road. But yeah, the way things are going, who knows? Um, be hard because my wife's got a lot of, of roots here. So I don't think that would be something she'd really want to do. And I understand that. Um, <clears throat> but also then, let's say you have property in a, a city. What do you want to do with it? No, we don't like that. You can't do that. There's, there's more, there are far more restrictions than I want right here. There are even more the further in that you get. And, and some of it, honestly, um, I mean, some of it makes sense in a city, right? You talk about building codes. I hate building codes. I despise them um, because what they, they do out here is they keep people from building structures that are are more aligned with the property, more in tune with the land, the resources available from the land, the um, the way the way the weather works with the land. A, a lot of this stuff. Um, and it's not that it's impossible, necessarily. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it, it really is. Like, you know, you're just not allowed to do that. Um, 
And you see, you see behind me, there's, there's some pines right there that could easily be harvested for wood. Um, but according to building code, you have to have that stamped. Now you can get it stamped. It's expensive. You got to know a guy. It's, and then there are some, some loopholes, but you really have to work hard at finding that and exploiting that. So it has the effect of most people just give up and, and go buy lumber. Um, now, I would, I would, I, anyway, I go on for a while about how building codes are horrible. I'm out in the woods. I understand why someone wants building code when they are like, they, they go knock on the wall and that's their next door neighbor. Okay. I, I get how that person, how they live their life directly affects the, like everybody, like within three dimensions, right? Up, down, left, right. Uh, yes. And so there's this certain amount of control that these people need to have over each other's lives. Or you end up with this, uh, well, you end up hating each other because people want to live differently. Okay. I'm here. There's a house going in down that way. I actually can't see it because of the trees. All right. I don't care. I mean, I kind of care. I would rather that wasn't going in because there's too many houses around here. The traffic's too much anyway. But okay, if he builds something, he builds a ramshackle shack. I don't care. I mean, actually, I would, I would like to think I'd, I'd go over there and say, "Hey, look, uh, do you want a hand? Because I, I think I could help you out, do it better, give you some, some materials or something." Um, but. If he builds something that is going to be, that's going to fall in, that's even going to catch fire. Okay, I'm a little concerned maybe if I think it's a huge fire hazard, but probably what's going to happen um, is his place is going to burn. I'm going to be sitting here going, is everybody all right? Yeah, yeah, all right, cool. Call me if you need something. And that sounds cold at first. It sounds like, how is that caring for people? But then you realize what it allows you to do is to not have control over each other's lives. So people that maybe would not have been able to afford to build a house can build a house. So what's more caring? I submit that it's not as simple as people think it is. Anyway... Just something to think about. Um, like I said, I'm in the middle of moving. I'm I'm going to be putting out more videos. I will I will try to do some stuff with actual projects because I love doing project videos. I love watching project videos. I love the how-to genre. Um, uh, it, it's just it's what I want more of this channel to be. But I also think some of this philosophy stuff is important, and it's going to be a little bit easier for me to do that. Um, something for you guys to think about. Anyway, in the meantime, back to that. Get out there, do cool stuff, and most importantly, y'all take care of each other. All right?